Um, but yeah, why don't you uh, <clears throat> why don't you take us through these first few slides? I'll kind of introduce the subject a little bit today and what we're going to be talking about. Um, Co-ops at Amazon, um, one of the most kind of um, uh, costly revenue loss um, uh, problems that a lot of Amazon suppliers have, uh, but also can be a tool um, uh, for supplier success too. So um, we've got Sean with us today. Um, it's great to have Sean back. He's our Amazon Retail Insights Manager. Um, he's got a lot of experience um, working in and around that retailer and um, working with suppliers. Um, <clears throat> and I am a writer at Supplier Wiki, so we do kind of like research into the things that suppliers are dealing with um, in a variety of, of retailers. So um, I have a lot of experience with Walmart and uh, compliance at Walmart and that whole world, but I've also been branching out into a bunch of other the other retailers too lately. So um, you can think of my knowledge is like a mile wide and an inch deep, whereas Sean is Amazon focused. And so um, hopefully between the two of us, we'll be able to answer any of your questions today um, on that subject. <laughs> so basically it's all co-op. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll cover a little bit about um, provisional co-op rates um, uh, as a kind of like specific subset of the general topic. We'll go over some of the um, essential accounting numbers and then look into auditing and disputing best practices or um, uh, auditing and disputing those deductions, doing validity checks on them, basically, um, in the language of Walmart. And then some general best practices. That's how you can kind of not just think of this as a negative thing, but think of it as something that can be turned um, uh, to your benefit as a supplier, too, as an actual kind of um, uh, uh, an opportunity for increasing revenue and efficiency. Um, and then uh, we'll do our Q&A at the end. So get those questions in early as, as they come up, put them in the Q&A, and then we'll do that. Then before uh, an optional product sneak peek for um, dealing with co-op deductions in uh, Supply Pike, uh, which is a more recent development of ours. All right. Um, so uh, a lot of people are always curious about, will we be getting a copy of the slide deck? Will we be able to see the recording? Yes, all of this um, you'll be able to see, you'll be able to have access to within, we say three to four business days, but it's usually less than that. Um, just depends on how um, how slammed our designers are, if they have the time uh, on their on their hands to do it. But yeah, usually before three to four business days, we'll send everyone who signed up for it, the email that was signed up um, for the specific account, we'll get a reminder um, and and we'll get a, a copy of the slide deck. Um, so if you're on someone else's email or if you missed one and you want to see it, you can always go to our website and um, either sign up for the webinar again if we're going to repeat it in, in the next couple of weeks or you can um, uh, see the recorded video on there or on our YouTube there's a bunch of different ways to um, to find it if you know what you're looking for. So um, go to our website, supplierwiki.supplypike.com, and you can explore that way. And then another kind of common question, uh, we use the chat for kind of public facing things. You can use the chat to ask a question to just the hosts and panelists um, if you would like, if you'd prefer to do that for whatever reason. Um, but the Q&A is a little bit more of a formalized process, and that can help me um, just uh, um, uh, pitch the questions to Sean at the appropriate moment, whether that's on an earlier slide or to save it for the end, to save it for our uh, Q&A session. So that's that. All right, so uh, last little introductory slide here before, I, um, before Sean kind of takes us away. Um, if you're curious about supply pike, stick to the end. We'll show you a little bit about what the app is like and, and how it can help with co-op specific um, problems at Amazon. Um, but yeah, we uh, we work in um, a bunch of different product categories um, with uh, a lot of different kinds and, and uh, sizes of different CPG suppliers. So uh, we got our start in Walmart working specifically with AP deductions, but now we're basically kind of growing out into the accounting revenue loss world generally. So we don't just have to be doing um, AP deductions for people. We can really do a, um, a wide variety of things from post audits to compliance fines and 
Um, and then, and then general kind of like revenue health. Um, how can we help you improve, um, improve your business from a revenue perspective? Um, is that's how the, that's the areas, areas that we've been growing into recently. Um, so these are some of our partners, uh, that we're really proud of working with. Um, uh, but really, um, what we say or what we like to say is that, you know, um, uh, stick around for the demo and just see if this is something that might um, make sense with your retailer business. Um, it's not for everyone, um, but we do work with such a wide variety of suppliers that we like to um, include that at the end of these uh, webinars as well, too. So that's that. Um, Sean, take us away. Thank you, Peter. Appreciate you setting the scene there. <clears throat> and then I'm going to set a little foundation myself here just with an intro to Vendor Central. Again, I just want to make sure for the audience today and for posterity, we're all on the same page with where we're going to go uh, with our discussion today. <clears throat> so again, uh, just for the purpose here, we're going to talk specifically about Vendor Central. Um, so Supply Pike is currently just focused on the one P side of Amazon. So the vendor central side is where we're going to be focused today. <clears throat> but just to help illustrate the differences between the two, uh, vendor again is going to be considered this uh, first party seller or the one P side of Amazon, where they're acting more as that traditional retailer, uh, purchasing products from manufacturers, reselling them to end users or their customers. Um, <clears throat> It's typically by invite only or for a smaller subset of specific uh, suppliers, vendors, or manufacturers, whereas Seller Central uh, is open to anyone who wants to sell their product on Amazon. It's considered a third-party marketplace where a seller can sell directly to customers, utilizing it, again, more as a platform or a marketplace as opposed to traditional retailer setting. So again, <clears throat> for today, focusing on Vendor Central um, and co-ops. But again, setting the scene here, if you're <clears throat> active or currently a vendor for Vendor Central, this is all going to be pretty straightforward or something that you've already got uh, baked into your day-to-day -day or your bookmarks. But Vendor Central, um, <clears throat> here's the login. You use one-time password or some type of two-step verification for security purposes in order to log in. <clears throat> as far as the, the look in Vendor Central, um, this is the, the look and feel. Uh, it is going through some changes you might have noticed recently. It's something we've observed on our end as well, kind of transitioning to a little bit of a new look and feel. But <clears throat> again, this is where we're going to be focusing uh, our time and our attention today. Uh, underneath the payment section, again, is typically where we focus in our space with deduction management, revenue loss, et cetera. So again, underneath the payment section is where we typically live and play uh, and where we're <clears throat> utilizing data from Vendor Central. So this will include uh, things like financial dashboard, the co-ops, uh, which are all of the agreement-based deductions, and then invoices, your remittance or your payments data, uh, and then things like your product returns, as well as the ability to dispute these deductions and then get a high level snapshot view uh, in their financial scorecard. So these are all the sections that, again, uh, we're active in or uh, primarily operating uh, with Vendor Central. But for today, we're going to be focusing in on Amazon's co-op. So what is Amazon's co-op? And uh, as far as the reasons why you're not getting paid, if you're working with Amazon, you're seeing a variety of different payments or deductions coming through in your, in your payments or through your remittance. Um, there's a number of different types of these depending on uh, the category. That'll include things like your typical invoice deductions. So uh, your shortages, compliance chargebacks, um, things like the PO on time accuracy, uh, the no carton content label, ASN accuracy, things like that, and then price claims. Um, but there's also agreement-based things. So um, kind of the trade versus the non-trade is another way to look at this, for example. But for the co-ops, these are going to be things like your, your freight allowance or your, your damage allowances, um, also things for your promotions, 
um, co-op, which other folks also often call accruals. So it's just your um, your annual accruals with the retailer in order to drive marketing-based activities and things like that. Uh, helping folks get to your detail pages, uh, land on your product pages faster in the search. It includes things like coupons, um, discounts, subscribe and saves, and all that good stuff. The other category um, are provisions, and these are kind of things like holds, not necessarily deductions per se, um, and also not necessarily things that we can dispute, um, but still something worth mentioning in the broader sense with Amazon as far as uh, revenue loss categories go. That includes things like your provisions for receivables, uh, provisions for miss missing actuals, or for aged receivables. <clears throat> so again, just a laser focus where we're going in. We're going to focus on this middle category today. We're going to be talking about co-ops, which will include all of those allowance-based things, your promos, your accruals, uh, coupons, cash, cash discounts, et cetera. So again, just unpacking a little bit more about what is an Amazon co-op. I think that term is somewhat specific to Amazon. So to decipher the Amazonian speak here, uh, it's also known as contra cogs or contra cost of goods sold. Um, and it is inclusive of a variety of agreements designed to generally cover things like your marketing or your promotional activity, uh, your freight allowances, typically for the collect freight, or if you're using Amazon's uh, freight program, or for things like your damage allowances. So again, these are the in the broad sense. Um, most, if not all, vendors operating or working with Amazon have these types of agreements typically. So again, just unpacking these in a little bit more detail now that we've uncovered some of the main types that people probably have agreements with Amazon for. So your co-ops or your accruals, including your damage or your freight allowance, again, they're accrued based on your net receipts into Amazon's fulfillment centers. It's typically done on a monthly basis. And all this really is, is the accumulated balance for the entire month. Uh, they're going to tally up what they've claimed to have received for that certain time period. And then they're going to bill against that accrued amount based on the schedule or the terms of each of those agreements. Another type of agreement we've got is straight payment. As the name implies, it's a fixed amount that's negotiated between you and Amazon or your supplier, vendor manager, buyer, et cetera. Um, this is something that you'll see is, again, just a fixed am amount that's going to be uh, recurring on a monthly or a quarterly basis. Other types of allowances that we've got will include things like your promo allowances, the SBA or your flex agreements. Um, so the difference in these is as opposed to accrual based, these will be based on sales or orders placed minus things that would have been returned um, or canceled uh, during that promo period. So this typically comes in the form of things like your vendor funded sales discounts, the VFSD. It's kind of the term that you'll also see in a lot of those agreements. And they're really, again, just going to be accrual based on net sales as opposed to net receipts. So um, any of these are going to be based on sales minus returns or canceled orders within that period of time. Another type of agreement, <clears throat> I would say this isn't uncommon, but it's not something that all vendors typically have when working with Amazon is some type of price protection agreement. So this is something that's going to help insulate or reduce risk against reduction of value for any units that are currently on hand or in transit. Um, so I know price increases um, or price reductions can happen over time. So this is simply going to help to reduce any risk of depreciating value for those units that Amazon currently has or are in route to them. So <clears throat> talking a little bit more about the invoicing side. Um, so we understand some of the reasons why Amazon's gonna have agreements in place. We understand now um, some of the terms of how Amazon's gonna be deducting, but now we can actually get into more of the, the tactical or the technical side of the invoicing to say that 
Um, sometimes the invoices and the shipments don't match. Why? <laughs> Why, you might ask? And it's because Amazon is going to be basing their totals on what their records show was actually received over a calendar month. Again, this might not exactly align with what you've shipped within a calendar month. Um, so the, the, the timing here could be uh, due to the difference in dates. Um, again, could be due to timing is basically what we're trying to say here um, in, in the differences. So again, part of the reason that we see the invoices not matching is just the way that things are always in motion kind of on that timeline in Amazon's receive process. So again, uh, things might not exactly line up and it's because things are more or less on a continual timeline in motion. So these dates can differ. Okay. So we've unpacked co-ops. Now we're going to, we're going to segue over and talk a little bit about provisional co-op rates. So not talking about the provisional um, holds or anything like that. Uh, provisional for this sense is just going to be um, kind of the temporary nature of co-ops until a more formal agreement can be put into place. So this is also to say if you're a vendor to Amazon, um, they're going to be uh, trying to get compensated for helping to drive those marketing activities regardless if you have an agreement in place. Um, and if you don't have an agreement in place, you're essentially at the mercy of Amazon to dictate the rate at which you're going to pay them for those activities. So uh, the provisional policy that Amazon has is, again, providing seamless activity for those vendors that don't have these types of agreements in place to cover for these contra cogs activities, aka helping to drive sales, drive traffic, and things like that, customize some of the um, user activity uh, for folks that have accounts on Amazon. And again, it's designed to help compensate Amazon for this investment, aka as a vendor, you're getting into their ecosystem um, and you're, you're getting benefits from being part of that ecosystem by nature of being there. So again, um, they want to, you to compensate them for that. So it's going to be taken as a percentage base, um, as a cost of goods sold until you come up with a more formal agreement. So that's what this is going to look like. And these are the things that I was mentioning that Amazon is going to claim and take credit for providing benefits to vendors as part of being in that invite only ecosystem saying we're gonna help promote your success by uh, creating automated marketing emails or site personalization widgets. If you've got that Amazon app on your phone, you know for sure that you're getting some push notifications that are based on these types of activities. Um, so traffic drivers related to SEO, so organic search, or just improving browsing capabilities within the Amazon application. Um, and it'll also include things like paid external marketing, so those side banners whenever you're on some other third party or affiliate website or things like catalog improvements. So claiming to improve your content or update things about search terms to help um, searchability or customers ultimately find or land on detail pages. Um, and it also includes things within that vendor central application that they will call self-service tools to help again manage, promote products through creating campaigns or coupons, lightning deals, et cetera, et cetera. So again, this is just highlighting why Amazon is has these provisional policies in place to help cover costs for these types of things. Um, <clears throat> but what we're adv advocating for is essentially uh, get these negotiated rates. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit more, but this provisional rate is gonna be applied until a more formal agreement has been signed or reached between the vendor and Amazon. Um, and the good thing about this is it's also going to be applied retroactively. So again, uh, that could work out to your benefit if you have a, a lower ag agreement rate negotiated to where, um, again, it'll net out if it works retroactively. So our advice here is that they're going to be applied, right? Um, so you can get a little bit more information about how this is being applied to you or some finer details on uh, the specific rates that Amazon's charging at any given time. Um, 
and it's only going to cover things that aren't negotiated. So if you do currently have agreements in place, I wouldn't necessarily worry about provisional rates, but um, there could be things or programs that items are, are included that um, if they're not covered by agreements, again, they'll just fall into one of these provisional policies. But again, we want more details about these policies, how they're being billed. Uh, there are some ways that you can find that information buried within Vendor Central, um, and the rates are going to be published underneath that payments tab, underneath the co-op, and then the provisional co-op rates section. Okay. So now that we've covered the bases as far as understanding a little bit more about the co-op program or kind of what's included in some of those activities um, and some of those agreements and how they work, we're gonna talk more just about the essentials or some of the basics and some of those accounting numbers. So for those that may be familiar, um, potentially redundant, but good information, again, is just a foundation and better understanding co-ops. Um, so again, these are accounting numbers for invoices, agreement-based things, uh, as well as product identifiers for participating in that co-op program. So these will all help you just to orient yourself and better navigate that space. So this will include things like your uh, invoice number. So for each agreement, there's going to be multiple different invoices that will ultimately be deducted over the term or the lifetime of that agreement. So you could think about it in that sense that there's going to be uh, many invoices for one agreement. Um, these invoice numbers will be listed at the top of the agreement. So again, that'll be a way that you can tie all these things together. You'll have the invoice as well as the, the payment and the remittance to include that together. Um, so again, each invoice will tie ultimately to an agreement that you've made that will be deducted multiple times over the lifetime of the agreement. That agreement number will also be lifted, listed on the top of that invoice uh, to let you know why it was deducted or what agreement it was part of to help you again tie together the terms and conditions better understand was this uh, agreement deducted for correctly or accurately. So the ASIN, this is Amazon's um, internal stock keeping kind of standard identification number. Each product sold has its unique one. So there's probably going to be some type of one-to-one -one relationship inside of your own um, internal uh, vendor system uh, that relates an ASIN to a SKU or a UPC or something like that. So this will be how you identify. And typically, again, whenever they're taking a deduction, it's based on accruals. So net receipts of an item or of an ASIN over a period of time or based on net sales of an ASIN or an item over time. So this is going to help us better understand, again, is Amazon deducting correctly based on the net sales that we've seen or based on the net ships that we've um, sent to Amazon for that specific period of time. So this is going to be pretty crucial for us to do our, our math or our validation efforts to double check what Amazon's deducting. And then last but not least, it's just a little food for thought or some uh, fun information about the invoice number is that it'll typically be associated with a product line or a product category and of a, a GL internal to Amazon is how they refer to it. But again, it's just more of something that's interesting, can help you orient if you're seeing different numbers or different invoice numbers when you're getting deductions could be because you're operating or selling in multiple different product categories and that's why. So nothing weird necessarily, but just something interesting. All right, so again, now we've laid the foundation, we understand some of the crucial numbers or uh, crucial bits of data for us to orient ourselves better around co-ops. Now ultimately comes to the point of auditing and disputing co-op deductions. So um, I think since these are agreement-based deductions, um, again, since they're agreement-based, a lot of folks just take it as the cost of doing business uh, with a retailer, whether that's Amazon or, or frankly, any of the other big box retailers out there where agreements are, are pretty standard to doing business with them. Um, even though these are uh, trade expenses, something that's budgeted for, 
they should absolutely be reviewed regularly for accuracy, audited, and if for no other reason than simply for accountability for your retail partners to say, hey, we're in this together um, and it's a two-way street. So you got to ensure that they're doing their due, due diligence to, to take the deductions per the uh, terms of the agreement or per those contracts. So auditing is really just a, a layer of accountability to make sure that they're holding true to their contractual obligations, just like you are. Um, and then invalid co-op deductions make sense, but they're directly impacting that financial bottom line. And if you want to talk about from a, uh, a margin or a profitability perspective, from a, a retail perspective, uh, this is absolutely going to cause challenges and just erode overall profitability, meaning you've got to ramp up your sales or you've got to make some more promotional initiatives to make up that lost ground uh, for these invalid deductions. So there's a couple of great reasons why this is important. Um, but it's arguably and understandably a very tedious process and time-consuming process. Uh, so we're going to shed a little bit of light on how we can simplify that. Um, and part of it's just understanding what are some of the common errors or discrepancies that we see or that we find in Amazon's accounting when, when we're looking at their co-op deductions. So some of them are going to be super common. They'll include things like negotiated exceptions, which pretty straightforward when we unpack that. They can also be uh, agreement-based discrepancies or backup report discrepancies. So we can think about this at a couple of different hierarchies or levels of discrepancies. So really it's just something uh, that you've taken between your uh, vendor manager, for example. So super easy to detect as far as, hey, <laughs> we've got an email or a written signed document between us and Amazon. It says we've got a waiver period or a grace period or some type of exception to having to pay uh, for co-ops or these certain type of co-ops. So again, the vendor would typically be aware that these agreements are waived for a time period, but um, given the way that Amazon works, um, they're very systematic. So it's not something that would typically avoid being deducted. So AKA what I'm saying here and what I've heard and experienced from a lot of vendors is that Amazon's still going to take the deductions regardless if you've got the exception. And they're of course going to request that you do the disputing in order to actually get the money back. So there's still going to be some type of legwork that's required typically, even though you've got a negotiated, <clears throat> excuse me, a negotiated exception. So this is absolutely something to keep in mind that there still may, still may be some auditing or some legwork required for disputing despite there being a negotiated exception. So that's just the first piece here. All right, the next one is going to be agreement-based discrepancies. So this is kind of the next level or the next layer to um, the auditing. And these are just where the agreement-based details have been implemented inaccurately. So you could think of this as an agreement being for a specific uh, term, AKA a certain time period. And then uh, we could have a specific rebate amount that's associated with that. So the easy examples here would be, we see examples where Amazon uh, is only supposed to be billing for a quarter of a year, but we see that they're billing outside of that time period, for example, or where, you know, if it's a rebate based amount, whether that's a fixed percentage or a dollar amount where Amazon's simply deducted for an incorrect amount. So a higher percentage or a higher dollar amount. And that's something that, um, again, seems simple, but can definitely add up uh, over time and over the number of invoices that Amazon can deduct for co-ops. Um, and the last one on here that I'll mention is we even see sometimes um, items being misreceived or misattributed from an incorrect vendor code or even from different vendors or suppliers entirely. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So the last one on here is going to be the most granular and detailed. <clears throat> and this is basically where we find uh, issues in Amazon's backup reports or in their math, essentially, 
and how they're coming up with or arriving at that total deducted amount. So this is really where we're getting into the granular or the item level detail. This is why I was mentioning earlier, understanding the ASINs or the items that are included in the agreements is really important is because if they are accrual based or sales based, we see oftentimes that on an ASIN level or on an ASIN PO combo that Amazon has uh, made some in inconsistencies in their math, which will include again, on a line item level, a wrong rebate, an incorrect amount, or again, wrong quantities that have been received, sold, wrong unit costs, or even receiving inventory again from different vendor codes or vendors entirely. So lots of weird things happen. And if there's lots of lines to go through in that backup report, again, it makes it very tedious and time consuming to do it. But again, it's very important still at the end of the day to go through that auditing process. So now that we've unpacked all of the reasons why you should do this, Let's go talk from a high level on how we actually go about doing this. So it's so a couple of different ways. Um, since everyone here likely has access to Vendor Central, we're gonna tell you about how to do this to something that's uh, familiar at least. And then a little bit later, when we actually go through the demo, we'll show you how Supply Pipe can help with that. But as far as a, a starting place for us, it's gonna be underneath Vendor Central in the payments tab and in the co-op section. And there's a couple of different ways to do it. You can use it by searching the invoice ID, the agreement number, or the specific date range that you're looking to try and identify a deduction. And then once you've selected a particular agreement or an invoice, uh, there's gonna be a drop down menu that you'll see there and you can select to either download the invoice the backup report or the agreement text as far as the available documents. So that's going to be kind of your evidence that you need in order to uh, double check Amazon's math or, or their deductions for accuracy. So again, this is going to be kind of your starting place, data gathering, um, go and grab these reports for a specific invoice or a specific agreement. And then from here is where we'll dig in into some more detail. Um, so I guess taking a couple steps back here, it's also important to understand who within your organization ultimately has permissions or the agreements, um, to, to make these agreements with Amazon. Um, so this is something that you'll be able to double check, validate, verify within vendor central underneath settings, manage permissions underneath here. Again, you'll be able to check within your organization who has the admin access in order to accept these agreements. Uh, who might have made these agreements for your organization in the past. Um, and I guess a good thing to note is that only admin users can actually accept or reject agreements. So that just helps to limit the overall amount of folks that can click and agree and uh, you know sign your life away to Amazon for that. But again, just a, another way to double check if it's not you, how you can find out quickly maybe who's responsible for that within your team. So dispute management, some kind of the other side of the coin here. <clears throat> so once we've done the data gathering, you know, maybe figure out who's responsible on your team for managing the co-op agreements. Uh, we also need to understand how we can dispute or contest these. If we've found inaccuracies or errors with Amazon's math here. And the way to do this is also through the dispute management section. Um, so Amazon is claimed to have made it easy and a, a simple spot for you to dispute all sorts of things, which will include your price claims, your shortages, vendor returns, as well as these co-ops. So it's kind of your one-stop shop. If you've been disputing historically things like shortages and price claims, you're already familiar with this section. It works very similarly, although there are definitely nuances to how you actually dispute the co-ops. So we can, we can dig into that a little bit as well. So there's a couple different ways to do the disputes. You can either do this directly through dispute management, uh, which we'll talk about now. So that's gonna be again, underneath this payments tab, um, dispute management. This section is gonna allow you to create new disputes, search for existing or any historical disputes that have been filed by your organization, uh, look into any currently active or closed disputes, 
to see again correspondence details, um, any of the results of that, including previous attachments or communications with Amazon. And then last but not least, for any active cases that you've got currently in motion with Amazon, this is going to be the location where you can actually correspond uh, and chat with folks as part of that case back and forth. So these are all things that you can do here. Again, this is going to be kind of Amazon's one-stop shop for disputes, um, as well as these co-ops. Okay, so like I was alluding to earlier, co-ops can be disputed in a number of different places. So one of those is going to be uh, in dispute management, but other is directly in the co-op section where you can review some of those agreements. So if you're gonna go do that through the co-op section, you can do that on invoice level. So again, you can see for each agreement, each particular invoice that's been created associated with each deduction. From there, there's a drop down menu where you'll be able to click dispute deduction in the available actions from that drop down, which will jump you over to a dispute portal where you can actually fill in the details from that dispute. If you go through dispute management, again, it's the same, same, but different. Uh, it gets you to the same place ultimately at the, at the end of the day. But from here, it's a little bit of a different workflow. Uh, you'll kind of have to be more targeted in this section where you'll, you'll need to know what you're, you're going to dispute before going here. Um, so when you click to create new dispute, you're going to have to specify that you want to dispute a co-op as opposed to a shortage claim or a price claim. And then again, you're going to have to know exactly what you want to dispute. So that'll include the co-op invoice number. Once that uh, green checkbox says that this is an invoice number that's valid for a co-op dispute, it'll allow you to click next and move through the workflow where we'll get to the more general workflow about creating that dispute. So as far as step one in the process goes, uh, you're going to select from a list of reasons uh, a drop-down list of things that you could have found as far as the types of discrepancies go. Um, there are a number of them that I mentioned earlier that will align with the um, options that you've got in Amazon's drop-down menu. So that'll be including things like an incorrectly applied rebate amount or things like um, you know wrong uh, time period for a deduction or you know, misassociated units or over overstated unit count and things like that. So find the applicable reason, select that to click continue. From step two, it's basically going to be justifying your dispute. So give a good reason to Amazon, hopefully support that with some data and evidence as far as why you're calling out Amazon, why you're disputing Amazon. It should ideally also align with the dispute reason that you've provided. So just contextualizing that a little bit more with some of the data. Um, so again, if you've seen that Amazon's taking a uh, deduction outside of the term, simply state, hey, Amazon, the terms of this agreement are only for January 1 through uh, March 31st. Uh, you've taken a deduction outside of the agreement terms. Therefore, the deduction is invalid or in error. Please pay back. Something as simple as that is a, is a good explanation and will do. But again, just a little bit more justification to help the folks on the other side better understand why you're filing a dispute. Last but not least, uh, it's going to be uh, crucial here. It's going to be including some evidence. Um, this is a this is a thing with Amazon in general is that they're very uh, data driven. And for almost every type of dispute require some type of detailed backup or evidence to su su support or, or further justify why you're filing that dispute. Um, so if you found an error in their accounting, if you've got an Excel file, or if you've got some sort of PDF that you can show uh, that proves that they've made an error, attach that uh, as your evidence. And then um, the next page, when you click to create dispute, You'll be given the option to fully review and just one last time to double check before you can actually click to uh, finally submit that dispute. So again, only three steps here. We make it sound simple, but really there is quite a bit that goes into it at the end of the day, whether that's the researching, the validation efforts, 
gathering all of that information to finally go in and tee up that dispute. So we'll try and talk through some best practices. How can we streamline this? Or what are some good ways to, again, kind of what Peter was talking about earlier, how do we turn this um, you know, from a, from a negative into a, a tool that we can use to help improve profitability or reduce some of that revenue loss in, in an area where we maybe hadn't considered before. Um, <clears throat> so just some best practices here from a very high level, again, is just first things first, table stakes. Um, you have to review and audit if you're going to uncover these erroneous and invalid co-op charges. Um, and this is where I will shamelessly plug supply pipe is that uh, we've got a lot of knowledge and expertise baked into our application. So we've got logic uh, that will help to uh, automatically and systematically validate each and every co-op invoice against the terms to ensure that Amazon is uh, being held accountable accurate, accurately for those deductions. Um, but again, uh, you can't uncover if you don't audit. And we're seeing on average anywhere between 1% to 5% of the total deducted amount uh, that's taken for accruals or other agreement-based deductions is being taken in error or due to some type of discrepancy uh, that I mentioned uh, earlier in the presentation. The other thing we want to say is outside of auditing, if you don't have agreements in place, don't be at the mercy of Amazon or at least reduce the amount of mercy uh, you know, that you have with Amazon here uh, as far as their provisional rates. Um, so again, there is benefit to having agreements in place, whether that's just to better predict and control the costs. Uh, but again, as those rates fluctuate, um, you can be better control of, of managing that side of the business with Amazon. So other things are, uh, again, uh, easier said than done here, but negotiate during your, your annual ABN, so your annual vendor negotiations, in order to try and reduce these co-op rates. Um, again, this isn't easy, but there are some levers that you can pull within your organization or in those conversations with your vendor manager or with Amazon um, that you can cite. Things like increasing efficiency, reduction in costs overall, or just general increases to your profitability um, with your products on Amazon. Um, so your PPM, net PPM, all of these things, if you can, if you can help uh, illustrate to Amazon how you've made improvements in profitability, these could be levers that you can use to negotiate or reduce your, um, your annual accrual amount. So food for thought at the very least, things that you can, can do to um, help reduce uh, some of these large amounts. The other thing that we'll mention here is that um, we have seen some correlation in the non-trade, in between the trade and the non-trade side of deductions. Um, so by mitigating or reducing ultimately the amount of shortages or compliance chargebacks that you'll get, um, this is going to help reduce or kind of insulate you from risk associated with these provisions that we mentioned earlier as well. So these will be things like your provisions for receivables. Um, if you've got a large amount of accruals or co-op based deductions that are expected for a certain time period, we see that again, if you've also got a, a high amount of shortages or compliance charges in that same period of time, there's a higher likelihood that Am Amazon's going to place a provisional hold or one of these provisions for receivables on your account. So. Again, more food for thought on these slides and hopefully in general, um, some good best practices that vendors, suppliers can leverage and working better with Amazon. All right. Um, well, we don't, thanks Sean for that um, really detailed kind of walkthrough of that um, uh, co-ops. Uh, we don't have any questions yet in the Q&A or in the chat, so um, definitely get those in um, now if you have any um, or if there are any that are kind of coming up. Uh, so we can transition now into the uh, uh, product preview. Um, first, we'll just put our emails up here just in case. If you don't have any questions now, but you want to kind of go into Vendor Central and try some of these uh, practices out, 
um, and you're afraid that you might have some questions later on, you can take our emails down now, or of course, just wait until you get the slide deck um, in a couple of business days too. Um, but we love hearing about um, what's working and what's not. Uh, we love getting updates from you guys. And um, for me personally, the thing that I can benefit the most um, from is just hearing from you guys about what you'd like to, um, uh, what you'd like for us to cover in these webinars, what um, subjects um, you would like for us to research and to kind of unpack together as a group. Um, so that's my, um, that's my kind of focus there with that too. Um, but with that, I think we can transition over into the product preview, Sean, if you want to go over um, <clears throat> co-ops and supply pike. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm happy to kind of uh, come full circle with my uh, shameless plug for the application here. So I'll dive right in um, and I'll start just with a high level overview of the application before we get into some of the specifics of co-op, given that we've got a little bit of time, but in general, so our, our motto at Supplied Bike is to get paid, get better. So we're creating tools, software tools for, um, for vendors and CPGs to help better manage and understand um, their business with Amazon and to drive recovery and overall profitability uh, with that Amazon channel, as well as with a number of other retailers, which currently include the likes of Walmart, Kroger, Target as well. Um, so dashboard view here is just going to give you a real high level view. I think a lot of folks see what we've made here and um, are lost a lot of the magic behind the scenes that takes to re really drive this type of visibility consistently, but we're going to be pulling data from Vendor Central account on a daily or a nightly basis in order to <clears throat> provide both high level detail as well as some pretty in-depth granularity and insights into your Amazon deductions, including understanding trends over time, uh, deductions by line item, as well as pretty clearly splitting out uh, a variety of different deduction types, including things like shortages, price claims, as well as co-ops. But <clears throat> it is not just going to be uh, dashboarding and, and visibility. We're, we're truly trying to um, drive uh, actionability as well. Uh, including action through automation. So um, we've basically created uh, and devised an entire workflow uh, that can be automated as well, where we can really go in and uh, on a granular level, highlight all of the reasons why a shortage might have occurred, um, including providing validity assessments um, and all of the corresponding information needed to file a dispute and then tracking that over its life cycle over time. So not just for shortages and price claims, but again, I know the topic for today has been co-op. So really for us, we've got a similar concept and workflow that we've built out for managing co-ops as far as understanding whenever uh, deduction's been created, uh, where it sits in its life cycle, if it's something that is disputable, AKA action can be taken, we'll market as such. Um, but not only that, again, I think the tedium in the process that I described earlier, as far as being able to one, have visibility, but um, being able to audit in mass is the is the true magic of supply pipe where uh, we really can make it as simple as filtering for uh, invalid claims and again, based on a number of criteria that, or logic that I mentioned earlier, we really are going um, either agreement-based or really backup detail-based uh, where we're uh, sifting through backup reports line by line and then connecting the dots with your live data from your vendor account, which will include either your net receipts or your net sales to provide some type of validity judgment here that says, based on data that we've tested, we think that this deduction is invalid and being able to really granularly call out what of that is actually invalid. So this is a great example where um, even though this is dummy data for the demo account, uh, this is something that we see happen all the time where ultimately 
um, we'd have to go through this entire backup report in order to understand that only a portion or only a subset of that total deduction amount is invalid. But we can spot things like discrepancies in the quantity billed versus what we see has been invoiced or shipped. And then really provide, again, extreme granular detail on what we've actually found is the discrepancy utilizing Amazon's own data and information against them and teeing up a dispute process that is super streamlined and simple. Again, all it's gonna take here is the click of a button. We'll already pre-fill the form, giving you the dispute explanation, giving you a list of those dispute reasons that I mentioned earlier, pre-filling the form based on that invalid amount that we've identified, including our homework or our backup report as the attachment for that, our evidence. So all you have to do is one click dispute, or use the bulk functionality to be able to currently dispute up to 20 invalid co-op deductions at a time. So really simplifying and streamlining the whole end-to-end -end process with co-ops, whether that's the visibility, the auditing, or driving action and recoverability. So the full end-to-end -end process has been made super duper simple and easy with technology. Um, and it's something that I think is going to be super enticing and interesting for vendors to better understand, um, you know, how accountable has is, is, uh, Amazon been to you as a partner, a retail partner over time, um, and if they haven't, can really start holding them more accountable. So that's going to be the the high level for me today as far as the, the demo goes. I know it's just a quick sneak peek of the functionality, but if folks are interested in, in learning more, again, shared our contact information and got some other resources on how you can get connected with us. Um, love to talk more details about this if folks do have more general interest or deeper questions they want to dig through with me or Peter. Yeah, great. Um... Uh, we had one late question or uh, a question from someone who had to join late who couldn't hear this earlier on. But okay. yeah, if, you, if you've signed up for this webinar with uh, your email, then at that same email, you'll get an, uh, um, a copy of the slide deck and a link to the whole recording of the webinar um, later on. Also, if you uh, if you go to our, uh, we have a YouTube channel for Supply Pike. If you subscribe to that, you won't miss any of our webinars. Um, if you go to supplierwiki.supplypike.com, um, which I can put in the chat now too, um, you'll be able to see um, all of our um, uh, all of our different webinars that we do on a on a variety of subjects for different retailers. We can see all of our Amazon content there if you're just on an Amazon team, um, uh, or some of the other major retailers as well. So. Um, that's that. But uh, thanks so much, Sean, for both the uh, co-op conversation and for guiding us through that uh, little supply pike um, preview there. Um, thanks to all for uh, all, all of you who joined us for the webinar as well. And we look forward to seeing you next time.